In the three days that have passed since the last episode, several significant events have taken place. Today, we will recall the three most interesting ones. We will start with the launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket, which carried an exceptionally heavy communication satellite from Florida. The second topic will focus on the assisted demise of the European satellite Aeolus, a scenario not originally planned for the mission. Our last topic will showcase unique perspectives on a full-scale test of the water deluge system used during the launch of the Super Heavy Starship. The seventh Falcon Heavy launch occurred after a two-day delay on July 29th at 3.04 Universal Time. The rocket took off from the LC-39A launch pad in Florida, the only one adapted for Falcon Heavy. Both side boosters were reused for the third time. Although initially planned for a dual sea landing, they eventually returned to land. Their landings on the LZ-1 and LZ-2 concrete pads were successful. The central stage of Falcon Heavy was new, which is logical. So far, in no launch of this rocket, either the central stage could not be successfully recovered, or SpaceX did not even attempt it. That was also the case with this mission. Therefore, the central stage did not have grid fins or landing legs. It would just be unnecessary weight. The central stage used all its propellant to accelerate the payload. The second stage achieved an almost circular orbit with its first burn. It then stretched this orbit into an ellipse with a second burn. Typically, the satellite payload would separate at this point and head to a geostationary orbit. However, this mission took a different approach. The second stage ascended with the attached satellite to the highest point of the elliptical orbit, about 28,000 kilometers high, where it performed a third burn to raise the lowest point of the orbit by several thousand kilometers. Well, we didn't hear a call out there from Mission Control. We did see the second engine, uh, second engine on stage. This trajectory will make the transition to the final operational orbit much smoother for the satellite. To maintain optimal temperatures in the second stage, a gray sun shield was applied to heat the kerosene tank with solar radiation. Three hours and 29 minutes after launch, the payload, Echo Star 24, also known as Jupiter-3, was successfully deployed. Weighing approximately 9,200 kilograms at launch, this satellite holds the title of the heaviest commercial geostationary communication satellite. Its signal will cover the entire American continent, providing a total transmission capacity of 500 gigabits per second. Regulations concerning responsible satellite disposal are continually evolving. Today, operators are required to de-orbit their satellites in a controlled manner or ensure that uncontrolled re-entries result in complete atmospheric disintegration. However, such rules did not apply to older satellites. The European Space Agency demonstrated that even for such satellites, a safe atmospheric re-entry can be ensured. The European satellite Aeolus was among those built when such regulations did not exist. Therefore, it was expected that the satellite would re-enter the atmosphere uncontrolled, and parts of its structure might survive and impact the Earth's surface. Although the risk of debris hitting anyone was extremely low, ESA decided to confront the situation. To demonstrate their commitment to responsible satellite management, ESA prepared an assisted re-entry for Aeolus. It was not an easy task, since the satellite was not designed for such maneuvers. The Aeolus mission was one of the most successful European space projects. 
Originally a technological demonstrator, it validated the use of lasers on satellites to monitor winds across the entire planet. Meteorologists worldwide have since used data from this satellite. The mission lasted longer than expected, and engineers planned the best approach for the satellite's assisted re-entry. Through simulations and tests, they gradually lowered the satellite's orbit. On July 28, at 1515 Universal Time, the satellite executed its final maneuver. Around 1840 Universal Time, Aeolus re-entered the atmosphere over Antarctica, and its remaining pieces landed in the southern Atlantic Ocean. The current success could be groundbreaking, as ESA demonstrated the possibility of safely deorbiting a satellite not initially designed for controlled re-entry. Aeolus disintegrated according to current rules and recommendations. Among the space news released on July 20th, we covered the test of the system that floods the launch pad during the launch of the Super Heavy Starship to prevent damage. Today, we revisit this topic. Wondering why? The previous test was conducted at a reduced capacity. On July 28th, a full-scale test took place. The entire system functions like a giant fountain or an inverted showerhead. Hectoliters of water are pushed under high pressure through numerous openings. Of course, SpaceX recorded the entire impressive test with their cameras. Notably, the slow motion footage posted on Twitter allows us to examine details that are usually hidden at regular speed. Another change from the previous test was the presence of Super Heavy Booster B9 on the launch pad this time. This booster is set to launch with Starship 25 on its second integrated test flight. The water deluge system will undoubtedly be required during their launch. SpaceX believes this change will prevent a repeat of the massive damage to the launch pad experienced during the first launch. Thank you for watching today's episode of Space Flight News. Our show also has a Twitter profile. You can find the link in the video description. We would appreciate your continued support by following us. Our show airs once every three days, with the next episode scheduled for Tuesday, August 1st.